Next, we're going to do some application problems that involve the trigonometric functions. And we have a couple more definitions that we need. First of all, the angle of elevation is measured from the horizontal up. So if your line of sight is up from the horizontal, then we call that angle that's made between the horizontal and your line of sight the angle of elevation. If you look down from the horizontal for your line of sight like this, then that's called the angle of depression. Now the bearing of a line, if I draw this line here and I set up my, a north, south, west, east coordinate system and I have a line from the origin that goes out like this at 50 degrees down from north, then I say the bearing of that line is north 50 degrees east. So when I use the bearing of a line this way, I name my north-south line first, then the angle, and then whether it's east or west from that. So you can see this is from north towards the east 50 degrees. This angle right here, we would say, is south 30 degrees east. If I had uh, the line went this way, then the bearing of that line would be south 30 degrees west. So first we name the north-south line, okay, and then the number of degrees, and then whether it's east or west from there. So let's go to the board now and look at our first application problem. For problem number one, we have the height of a right circular cone is 25.3 centimeters. If the diameter of the base is 10.4 centimeters, what angle does the base does the side of the cone make with the base. I'm going to start by drawing a right circular cone over here. It will look like this. The base is a circle and the vertex is directly above the base. This will be the height right down to the center of this circle and that height is, uh, what have we got, 25.3 centimeters. Now the diameter of the base is 10.4 centimeters so the radius right here this is going to be 5.2 centimeters. And this is a right angle. So I have a right angle right there. This is 25.3. This right here is 5.2. And what I want to find is this angle right here that the side makes with the base. So I'm looking at a little cross-sectional right triangle right here. And I want to find this angle, which I'm going to call theta. So I need to find that angle theta. To find angle theta, in this right triangle, here I have theta, I have the side opposite theta, and I have the side adjacent to theta. So I'm going to use a tangent ratio. The tangent of theta is equal to 25.3 divided by 5.2. So that gives me on a calculator, then when I solve this equation on a calculator, 25.3 divided by 5.2, then I find the inverse tangent of that, I end up with theta equal to, to the nearest uh, tenth of a degree, 78.4 degrees. So 78.4 degrees. Now I took it to the nearest tenth of a degree because this has three significant digits and this has three significant digits. When I divided by two right here, I got 5.2, but I should say 5.20 because this really has three significant digits because this one did also. So 5.20 for the radius, then this is the height 25.3. I use a tangent ratio, I get this. Theta to the nearest tenth of a degree is 78.4 degrees. Here's our next problem. Problem number two, a 72.5 foot rope from the top of a circus tent pole is anchored to the ground 43.2 feet from the bottom of the pole. What angle does the rope make with the pole? Okay, let's draw in the ground right here. Let's just say that's the ground. Then I have my tent pole that comes up like this and then there is a rope from the top of the tent pole to the ground right here and I'm going to assume that the tent makes an angle of 90 degrees with the ground. Okay so next then let's fill in what we have. The rope is 72.5 feet long so 72.5 for this length right here. Then uh, it's anchored to the ground 43.2 feet from the bottom of the pole so this is 43.2 feet right here and I want to know what angle the rope makes with the pole. So I want to know this angle right here that the rope makes with the pole. So this will be my angle theta. Now again, I have the opposite side right here, and then this is the hypotenuse. So the trigonometric ratio that relates this angle theta with the side opposite theta and the hypotenuse is, of course, the sine ratio. So I have this. The sine of theta is equal to 42.3. <laughs> 43.2, I should say, divided by 72.5. Now, I work this out on a calculator, and this will give me theta 
equal to 36.6 degrees to the nearest tenth of a degree. And again, I did this to the nearest tenth of a degree because I had three significant digits for both of my sides right here. So I draw a little diagram that sort of represents the situation. In the diagram, then I label the things that I'm given and the thing that I'm asked for, find a trigonometric ratio that relates all of them, then solve that for, the, in this case, angle theta. Uh, let's look at our next problem. A person standing 150 centimeters from a mirror notices that the angle of depression from his eyes to the bottom of the mirror is 12 degrees, while the angle of elevation to the top of the mirror is 11 degrees. Find the vertical dimensions of the mirror. So I'm going to set this up this way. Here is the mirror right here, and this person is standing over here 150 centimeters from the mirror. Now when the person looks down to find the angle of depression to the bottom of the mirror, the line of sight then is down. This is 12 degrees. When the person looks up to the top of the mirror, this angle right here, the angle of elevation is 11 degrees. So I have 11 degrees, 12 degrees, and 150 meters. So let me mark this part from here to here with x, and then this part right down here from the center of the mirror, or from this point on the mirror that's where these are right angles, down to the bottom of the mirror with y. So I'm going to solve one, one triangle right here for x and the other triangle right here for y. So I have this angle right here, 11 degrees. I have this side, which is adjacent, and I'm looking for the opposite side. That's a tangent ratio. So the tangent of 11 degrees is equal to x divided by 150. Same thing over in this triangle. I have that angle, 12 degrees, the adjacent side, 150, the opposite side, y. So I have the tangent of 12 degrees is equal to y divided by 150. So tangent 11, x over 150, tangent 12, y over 150. I solve each equation, solve this equation for x and this equation for y. What I'm looking for is the vertical dimensions of the mirror, which is x plus y. x is 150 tangent 11. And y is 150 times tangent 12. Now, if we work that out, and if you do this on a calculator, let's see, uh, 150 tangent 11 plus 150 tangent 12. Did that on the calculator. Check my little sheet here. That comes out to be 61, and what am I working with here? Centimeters. So that comes out to be 61 centimeters to the nearest two significant digits right here, because I have my nearest to the nearest degree right here for my angle, so I'm going to say my significant digits are two, round this to 61 centimeters. So another problem in which I use my second definition uh, for the six trigonometric functions that's in terms of a right triangle. I set the problem up so that I have right triangles and that I solve for the missing parts. That gives me uh, the solution to this problem right here. Here's our next one. Problem four, Lompoc, California is 18 miles due south of Napomo. Buellton is due east of Lompoc and south 65 degrees east from Napomo. How far is Lompoc from Buellton? Well, let's uh, first draw in a little north, south, west, east coordinate system here. North is always up, south down, west is over here on the left, and then east is on the right. Okay, so now I use that for reference, and I want to say Lompo, California is 18 miles due south of Napomo. So let's put Napomo right here. There's Napomo, and I'm going to go 18 miles due south of that, and I'll end up with Lompo. Let me move it down a little bit more. So here's Lompoc right here, and this is 18 miles. Lompoc is 18 miles due south of Napomo. So here's Napomo. I go due south. I end up at Lompoc. Now let's see. Buellton is due east of Lompoc. So here's Lompoc. Buellton is going to be due east of Lompoc. So I want to go over here to due east, and that will be Buellton, and that's a right angle because this is due south and this is due east, so that's going to be a right angle. How far? Well, let's see. And then... No, Buellton is south, 65 degrees east from Napomo. So here's Napomo, here's Buellton, south, 65 degrees east. That gives me this angle right here, south, 65 degrees east. Now, how far is Lompoc from Buellton? So that's what I want to find right there, that distance x. Let's see what I have as far as a trigonometric ratio. I have 65 degrees. 
I have the side opposite that, and I have the side adjacent to that. That tells me I'm looking for a tangent ratio. The tangent of 65 degrees must be equal to x divided by 18. So x divided by 18, multiply both sides of this by 18, x is equal to 18 tangent 65 degrees, and if I look on my sheet right here, 18 tangent 65 degrees comes out 38.6 miles, so I'm going to round that off to 39 miles so that I can keep the significant digits that I have right here. I just had two significant digits, 18 right here, so I want to round my answer off to 39 miles. So Lompoc, California, you can see is due south of Napomo, and Buellton is due east of Lompoc. Buellton is also south 65 degrees east from Napomo. That information right there, from that information right there, I can tell you how far Buellton is from Lompoc or Lompoc is from Buellton, that distance right there using a tangent ratio. Lompoc, California, by the way, is where I started my teaching career. Um, let's do one more application problem. Problem number five, an ecologist finds the height of a tree that is on the other side of a creek. From point A, the angle of elevation to the top of the tree is 10.7 degrees. So I've drawn this little diagram right here. And from point A, the angle of elevation to the top of the tree, that's this angle right in here, that turns out to be 10.7 degrees. Okay, the distance from A to B is 24.8 feet. That's this distance right here, 24.8 feet, and B is 86.6 degrees. So that's this angle right here that's down in this flat um, right triangle right here. This is a right angle right here, and this triangle lies flat on the ground, you know, projected through the stream right there. This angle is 86.6 degrees find the height of the tree. So I'm looking for this height right here. This is the distance x that I want to find. Okay, that's a side in this triangle right here, and I have this angle in this triangle. What I need is one side in this triangle. Well, if I go to the flat triangle that's right here, I have this angle, and I have this side, so I should be able to find this side. So let's call this side right here side y. And I just want to look at the flat triangle that lies on the ground right here. I have this angle, this is the side that's opposite, this is the side that's adjacent. So in that flat triangle, what I have is tangent of 86.6 degrees is equal to y divided by 24.8. That tells me that y is equal to 24.8 times the tangent of 86.6 degrees. If I work that out on the calculator, this tells me that y is equal to 417.43, and I'm going to keep a couple of extra digits right here just for a minute because this isn't my answer, this is just an intermediate step, but I want to write down this intermediate step so you can see it, and then I'll show you what, what's going to happen next. So we'll just stay on this wide shot right here. I'm going to go back to this vertical triangle right here. Remember, that's a right angle in this vertical triangle. I have this angle, which is 10.7. I have this side now, which is 417.43, and I want this side right here. That's another tangent ratio, and I'm going to say that the tangent of 10.7 degrees is equal to x divided by 417.43. Now, if I multiply both sides of this by 417.43, you see I get x is equal to 417.43 tangent of 10.7 degrees. And let's say I work that out, and that comes out 78.9 feet. Now, how are my significant digits doing right here? Let's see, I kept three. Uh, I had three here to start with, and the angle was to the nearest tenth of a degree, so 78.9 will work. So the height of that tree then is 78.9 feet, and I found that by using a combination of uh, information in this bottom flat triangle and then also in this vertical right triangle right here. So in this section, what we've done is looked at some applications that rely on this definition of the trigonometric functions that's given in terms of a right triangle, and then also the ability of you to use your calculator.